as part of the development work for the Red Hat++ Plus Plus Shield, I have restructured the way how the IoT stick connects to command sources via Wi-Fi. And just the last few days I have implemented the IoT stick's Wi-Throttle server. Keep watching to see how everything works. Welcome to the IoT channel, I am Hans Tanner. Connecting sensors, buttons, throttles and trackside devices via Wi-Fi or the Internet was an important part of the development work from the very start of the IoTT channel. It started out with the Loconet to MQTT gateway in video number 1. Later I added a DCC interface and it became possible to view and distribute DCC commands via MQTT. The nice thing about MQTT of course is that it is an established transport protocol with public servers available on the internet, so sending Loconet commands all around the globe is a piece of cake. Sometime later I added Loconet over TCP. Similar to MQTT, this protocol uses a server that needs an uplink connection to Loconet and then distributes the Loconet commands to a number of connected clients via TCP. The nice thing is that Loconet over TCP is supported by JMRI in both ways, either as server or as client. So you can connect the computer with JMRI to Loconet using a USB interface like LocoBuffer or PR4, then activate the Loconet over TCP server and extend the Loconet connection via Wi-Fi to IoT sticks and other dev devices that support that protocol. Or you can connect an IoT stick to Loconet using the Loconet interface board, activate the Loconet over TCP server on the stick, and then connect the computer with JMRI wirelessly as Loconet over TCP client. So, depending on your setup, you have options. Just recently, I also added a Vice Throttle client to the IoT stick. This interface is similar to Loconet over TCP, but it is limited to commands that are needed by a throttle to operate a locomotive and set turnouts. It is used by throttle apps for the smartphone and connects to a Vice throttle server, which provides the gateway to the command control system. Vice throttle servers are available in JMRI and are built into some Wi-Fi modules like the Digitrax LNWI or the MRC Prodigy Wi-Fi module. And quite important, a Vice throttle server is also available on the DCC++ X command station. So I decided to add one to the IoT stick as well. On the app side, the Vice Throttle protocol is supported by the original Vice Throttle app for the iPhone and Engine Driver for Android phones, and maybe some others. Adding more connection options unfortunately comes with a problem as the combinatorial possibilities increase the configuration options dramatically. And that's why I restructured the configuration screen. Here is how it looks like. The first option is still labeled command source and it tells the IoT stick where commands are coming from. Compared to earlier versions, this list became shorter because all the server and gateway options and their combinations are eliminated. It is limited to just the interfaces the IoT stick is able to use. Like DCC interface is the wire-based DCC breakout board. DCC over MQTT is used to listen to DCC commands from an MQTT broker. Loconet loopback is kind of a Loconet simulator. You can use it together with yellow hat and green hat if you want to use these devices standalone without any live Loconet connected. What it does is routing input messages from the button pins back to the device so that they can be interpreted and used for the LED chain or the event handler module. Loconet interface is to connect to a wired Loconet using the Loconet breakout board. Loconet LB server client is used to connect to a Loconet over TCP server, for example JMRI, and get the commands from there. 
Loconet from MQTT is used to get Loconet commands from an MQTT broker. Vicerottle client is used to connect to a Vicerottle server, for example JMRI, and get throttle commands from there. And MQTT with topics is used to connect to a broker that is sending device-specific topics. So for example, topics for switching off and on LEDs or topics to read buttons. The next section is the function module selection. That is the same as in previous versions. And as before, the configuration screen will only let you select options that technically are possible. And then there is that new section where you can select communication servers. The available options depend on the command source settings. For example, if your command source is the DCC interface, the only server option will be MQTT, as sending the DCC information to an MQTT broker is all you can do. If you select LockConnect, on the other hand, the full range of server options is available. You can forward LockConnect commands to an MQTT broker, to one or several LockConnect or TCP clients, and to one or several Viceroutle clients. And all of this in any combination and at the same time, simply by checking the servers you want to activate. So let me do some examples to show you. The first example is the standard LocoNet to MQTT gateway setup. I have a LocoNet with attached command station and would like to send the LocoNet messages via MQTT to a network of attached nodes. To build the gateway, I connect a LocoNet interface to the IoTT stick and select LocoNet interface as command source. In the communication server section, I check LocoNet to MQTT gateway. After saving, I get the MQTT Broker tab, where I can enter the access information of the broker. In my case, it is running on a Raspberry Pi, but it could also be a public server somewhere in the Internet. With that, all LocalNet messages are now sent to the MQTT Broker and from there distributed to all other nodes that are connected to that broker. So, I can simply connect a smartphone running a LocoNet viewer to see the messages. Very convenient for working somewhere on the layout if you can see what is being sent over the network. Of course, I can now also connect another IoT stick, for example, one that operates a green hat servo decoder. In this case, the stick is receiving the commands from the MQTT broker, so I select LocoNet from MQTT as the command source. I then select Green Hat and set up the servos for the DCC addresses I want. And now I can control the servos and LEDs of the Green Hat from the LocoNet system via Wi-Fi. Next, I would like to connect JMRI so that I am able to control the servos from the computer as well. All I need to do is checking the LocoNet LB server option in the communication server section of the IoTT stick. Which stick? Typically, you would choose the stick that is closest to the wired LocoNet. But since the full message traffic is forwarded via MQTT, you could also activate the LocoNet LB server on the stick driving the green hat. The cost would be a slightly increased latency since the messages travel over the MQTT broker. In any case, you then set up JMRI to act as LB server client. To do that, you create an additional LocoNet connection and set the system connection option to LocoNet over TCP and then enter the IP address of the stick you want to connect to. Also make sure that the TCP port is set to the same value as it is on the IoTT stick. And that's it. Close the dialog, restart JMRI, and you now can use the turnout control dialog to set the servos on the green hat. And if you open the JMRI LocoNet viewer, you can see the messages flowing. And you can verify that these are the same messages that you also see in the MQTT-based LocoNet viewer or in the LocoNet Viewer webpage of the IoTT stick. So far, this is nothing new. MQTT Gateway and LocoNet over TCP have been available on the IoTT stick for quite a while.
The only thing I changed is the way how they are configured as there are two different sections now to specify where the commands are coming from, so the command source, and how they are provided to the next link in the chain selected by the server options. So the overall structure of the Loconet is kind of like a tree, with the Loconet command station as the root, and then a wide possibility of branches. The command source settings of the IoT stick thereby point towards the root, and the servers are so to speak connectors for other nodes. The only thing you want to be careful about is that you maintain the tree structure and do not accidentally create a message loop that sends the same message around in circles. This would be possible in the case of two nodes with activated MQTT broker that use the same broker and the same topics. It is ok to implement two gateways and it is even ok to use the same MQTT broker for both of them. The only thing you need to make sure is that you use different topics for each communication link so that the tree structure is maintained. Using the same topics on the other hand would create a message loop and the traffic would be really wild for a moment and then the IoT sticks would reboot. Now for the new kid in the block, the Weisrottle server. Well, not surprisingly, it works the same way. Simply check the Weisrottle server checkbox on the stick you want to act as Weisrottle server and make sure the command source is connected to a Loconet source, so either the Loconet interface, a Loconet over TCP client or Loconet from MQTT. Once activated, you get the Weisrottle Server tab, where you can specify the port number you want to use. The default is 12090, and so far I have not seen a reason to ever change that. Then you enter the IP address of the stick and the same port number into the Engine Driver or Weisrottle app on your smartphone and click Connect. Next, you select a locomotive address and you are able to control it from your smartphone. You can also open the Turnout dialog in Engine Driver, enter the address of your turnout and control it using the Throw and Close buttons. And if the selected locomotive is assigned to another throttle, you can still control it from that throttle and the speed and direction changes will be updated on the smartphone. What is missing right now is support for routes and locomotive rosters. That is something I probably will implement in future versions of the software. So are you ready to try it out? At this point the new version is not officially released, but I have provided a beta version. You can download it from the link in the video description below. Unzip the file and install it like the released updates simply by running the update batch file. The beta version will then be installed on your IoT stick and you are ready to go. And of course, as always with beta version software, please let me know if you run into problems or bugs. The Weisrottle server is a completely new element of the IoT stick software, so some bugs are to be expected. And that's it for today's video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you are ready to give the Weisrottle server a try. If so, please click the like button below to help to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general and click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you are in a premium seat when new videos come out. And of course, I am looking forward to reading about your experiences using the Weisrottle server on the IoTT stick. Please let me know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.